Hi, I'm Thomas. Welcome back to the course Business Strategy. Today's topic is Strategy Formation. We'll look at three types of strategy formation. Functional strategy, business unit strategy, and corporate level strategy. Each of these in more detail in the following slides. Functional strategy relates to the strategies at the individual functional levels of the business. So here we have our main functions listed. Marketing, finance, production, human resources, IT, research and development, and certainly we could have other functions with specific particular strategies for the function as well. We won't look at these in any more detail other, to, other than to note that at the function level within the larger organization, there can be strategies specific to each of these different functions or divisions of the company. At the business unit level, the business unit strategy, most concepts are relating to the three generic strategies that were described by Michael Porter in his writings, low cost, differentiation, and focus. A low cost strategy is the idea of keeping costs low so that in turn you can be very competitive in your pricing. As we discussed when we began the course, the concept of competitive advantage is doing something different, not doing something better. And a low cost strategy can be challenging because many low-cost activities are simply doing things better than your competitor. And if all you're doing is better, someone can catch up to you. But it is possible to develop a strategy based on low cost. And usually what makes a successful low-cost strategy, some of the components of a su successful low-cost strategy would be vertical integration. The more vertically integrated you are within an industry, the more components of the value chain that your organization controls, the greater the possibility of succeeding with a low-cost strategy. Additionally, having strong engineering, having high-tech equipment, having the production and manufacturing capabilities that allow you to do things that minimize your costs in a way that your competitors can't also will enable you to succeed with a low-cost strategy. Looking next to differentiation. Differentiation is focused not on minimizing costs but maximizing quality, maximizing revenue, asking for and receiving a higher price from your customers because you're providing something better than what other entities, what other competitors in your industry are able to provide. So this comes from a focus on customer service, a focus on high-end labor, a focus on quality materials, a focus on unique qualities that make your product different. The more you implement those qualities into your product, the more successful you're going to be with a differentiation strategy. And then finally, focus means that within a particular industry or a particular product line, we're not trying to target everybody. We're focusing on a narrow segment. That might be an age segment. That might be a geographic segment. That might be a particular profession or a particular race. So we're not looking to have as large of a let's say as large of a footprint as possible in the industry. What we want to do is we want to focus on quality. Typically the focus strategy ties more closely to differentiation than it does to low cost. Low cost generally implies or requires high volume to be successful. Focus by definition isn't focused on high volume. It's focused on a niche and that means that we're not selling to as many people or to as many customers as we would be if we had a broader strategy. So generally, differentiation works better as a match to focus than low cost, although it certainly is in some cases a successful strategy. Some companies do use the combination of focus and low cost, but generally focus works better in pair with differentiation. Now let's look at corporate level strategy. Looking at corporate level strategy, we're asking the question, what businesses should we be in? And we have three options, stability, growth, and retrenchment. 
stability means that we're aiming to maintain the level of activity that we're currently realizing, that we're currently achieving, and while doing that we want to maximize our profit and make sure we continue to be successful. Growth and retrenchment are two other options that we're going to look at in more detail next. When our corporate level strategy is growth, we have several options that we can pursue. And we have six here. Let's discuss each of these. Vertical integration. We've talked about vertical integration is the idea of taking on more of the value chain from where we are in the value chain, either working backwards to integrate components of the value chain earlier in the process or working forward to integrate components of the value chain later in the process. That's the concept of vertical integration. Horizontal integration is taking on more of the activity where we are in the value chain. So if we're a manufacturer in a particular industry, we might acquire a competitor, another manufacturer in the same industry. That's an example of horizontal integration. Horizontal diversification is getting into a different industry with the same customers that we're already serving in the industry in which we're already participating. So horizontal diversification is different industry, same customers. Conglomerate diversification is also known as unrelated diversification. If we look at the three options that we just discussed, they all have a component of related nature, related to something that we're already doing. Vertical integration related to the same industry. Horizontal integration also related to the same industry. Horizontal diversification related to the same customers that we're already serving. Conglomerate diversification is unrelated. New industry, new customers. This tends to be the riskiest form of diversification. The concept of conglomerate diversification is that if we get into new industries, we can diversify our risk. Although another position to take is that the shareholders can decide whether they want to diversify their risk and how they want to diversify their risk so that instead of us getting into multiple industries, the shareholder can simply make the decision which companies, which industries they want to invest in and then buy shares in those individual industries. Nonetheless, we're going to look at a tool to analyze the concept of conglomerate diversification in the next slide. And in pursuing these strategies, a couple of key options, a couple of popular options to do the strategies, to pursue the strategies, are one, mergers and acquisitions. One option to get into a new business, whether it's related or unrelated, is a new startup. Another option is mergers and acquisitions, or M&A. We can acquire an existing company. So the concept of mergers and acquisitions is frequently used as a tool to pursue these corporate level strategies. And one possible point of focus for these strategies is internationalization. When a company, whichever strategy they happen to be pursuing, when a company is going international, there's more complexity, there are additional factors to consider, legal factors, political factors, economic factors, etc. So internationalization as a component of corporate level strategy adds some additional complexity to the strategy. Let's look at a tool we can use to analyze conglomerate diversification. This is the BCG matrix, the Boston Consulting Group matrix. We see that on the y-axis we have our growth rate and on the x-axis we have market share and based on the two options low and high in each of these categories we have four quadrants in our matrix. The cash cows in the lower right hand corner have a low growth rate and a high market share. They produce a lot of cash for the company. We don't need to reinvest in the cash cows because they're not growing. They don't really have any use for the additional cash. So the cash cow provides us with cash for other investments. The stars are high and high, high growth, high market share. They're producing cash flow, but that cash flow is required within the star itself to continue to grow, to continue to take advantage of the growth and to 
acquire more market share continue to be successful. So we're not going to be taking cash, most likely, we won't be taking cash out of the stars like we will be taking cash out of the cash cows. The question mark. This is an entity that's growing. It has low market share and the question is, will it be able to achieve high market share? If it continues to grow and achieves high market share, then we have a successful division, either a cash cow or a star, but a successful division. If it doesn't continue to grow, then we have a situation in which a division has low and low, low market share, low growth, and that kind of a division, that business is a dog. Generally, dogs are businesses we don't want to continue to be involved in. They're not producing any benefit to us. There's no growth, there's no cash flow, so we're going to look towards getting out of that business. And getting out of businesses takes us to the final corporate level strategy, which is retrenchment. Now, these aren't all exit strategies, but let's look at our options for retrenchment. We can either turn around a division or turn around a company. If a company isn't succeeding, we can make the effort to change something so that it becomes a successful entity. We can look at divesting or selling the entity. So we don't want to keep it. We want to find a buyer to take it and we negotiate a sales price and exit that business. Or in a situation in which we can't turn the business around, we can't find a buyer, we liquidate. We sell the assets, we pay off the liabilities, and whatever cash is left either goes to the corporation or if that was the entire corporate entity, then the cash remaining is distributed to the shareholders. This concludes our lecture on strategy formation. And if we were to look at all of these concepts in depth in a case study analysis format, this topic alone would take an entire semester. So we won't look at all of these topics. What We'll pick some of them to focus on and look at in more depth through case study analysis in class.